of mothers, and we thank God for mothers. Amen. So God bless you for giving of yourself to your family and to your husband. And may the Lord continue to bless you as you continue to nurture your children and that you may do Amen. it with wisdom and understanding and with the love of God in Jesus' name. So Dexter, what is the topic today? I'm excited. Well, it's what happens when we die, or, or oh, death, where is your sting? And we're going to talk Ooh. about really something that we could have fear of dying, but which is really a true blessing when we go to the Word of God, of what happens when we do die. So we're going to take away that fear today, Marisol, and we're going to just bless everyone with the truth of God's Word. You know, as I was growing up as a child, um, I used to go to funerals sometimes, and I used to see sometimes people just go crazy in their funerals because they didn't have the relationship and they hadn't accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So death to them was a very tragic thing. That's right. But then I know some families that their family members are saved and when they died, it's more of a celebration of that person's life and they know that they have the hope and the certainty that that person is in heaven and that they're going to spend eternity with them. So the way you look at death depends on your personal relationship with Jesus, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Yep. Amen. So you, amen, and you have some prayer requests. Yes, and Marisol, what I'm doing is so I'm the joy of our ministry is praying so amen so we're going to pray for these prayer requests so i'm going to start naming and, them and, and we're going to pray e for everyone them. come in agreement with yes. us there's power when faith comes in agreement and mm -hmm. it is so powerful in the kingdom of god father we just thank you lord that you're going to bless amen Ebla's son. he has a tumor in his in her womb we declare her heal in Jesus' name. And we curse that tumor and we command yes. it to die. In Jesus' name, come out of her body without harm. In harming Jesus' her. name. And now, Father, we ask you to restore every cell in and Jesus be healed in name. Jesus' name. Father, Faisa, her eyes are hurting and she's very sick. We speak healing into you, Faisa. And we speak that you have eyes like an eagle in the name of Jesus. And pain free and in pain Jesus' free name. Pain free in pain Jesus' you must go name. In Jesus name. We have Ramon's mother from Luxor, which is in Lower Egypt. Mm -hmm. She's a widow and she's taking a lot of medicine. So the Lord, they want us to pray for her, for the Lord to heal her Amen. and protect her. Amen. And so, Father, we just yes. come in agreement over you that speak this word of healing in Psalm 103.3, that not only are all your sins forgiven, we come in agreement with that over your family and your family line and all the way back to the generations of Adam, but that also... In that same scripture, 103.2, is that all your diseases are healed. So, Father, we come in agreement with the word that by the precious stripes of the Lamb of God, all your diseases are healed. We speak that into your body, and we command all the spirits of infirmity, all spirits of diseases yes. to come out of our body, go and never return in the name of Jesus. And by the precious stripes of the Lamb of God, now be healed and restored, and everything that was damaged be healed and restored and be made whole in the name of Jesus. Amira wants prayer for her work, okay? Amen. And Moshan has a lot of diseases that are very painful, and he wants prayer for him and his wife and his son. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. we bless Amira in her work. Father, you gave her favor with the boss That's right. in Jesus' name and the wisdom and the ability to do her work wonderfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray for Mosem. Father, we speak healing into him. Pain go away in the name of Jesus. We, we bless Jesus his name. wife and his son in Jesus' name. Father, we also bless our brother Kamal, Kamel Barsoom from Canada, who has a lot of diseases. We speak healing into you, and we declare that you're healed by the stripes of Jesus we agree. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We bind those spirits and firmly yes. command them to go. And been released. We plead the blood of the Lamb over you. There's specific areas, Father. We just plead the blood of the Lamb to cover and heal those areas. There's a spirit moving right yes. now. 
Father, just release your healing throughout his entire body and anyone else that needs it in Jesus' name. Yes. By the stripes of the Lamb of God, be healed Heal in Jesus', in name. Jesus yes. name. And we plead the blood of the Lamb in every cell in your body, all your DNA, every organ in your body, all your blood vessels, everything, be healed and restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. Alberto Fick needs healing and prayer for his family. Magdi, Joseph, Monica, and Samia, and they're from New York. Father, we bless this family we agree. in the name of Jesus to know you and to follow you in the in power, the power of, the of the resurrection. And that they will be guided by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. We also declare healing over Albert. In Jesus' name, we declare him healed. Father, we have a, a request from Aswan. Amen from Georgie and Fatih, they want to have children. Father, we just thank you that you Amen. bless her womb to be fertile and that she will have a baby in the name of Jesus Amen. for your honor and for your glory and it will be a great testimony for people to know that God is real in Jesus' name. We bless your womb yes. to be fruitful. We bless the sperm to be fruitful and, and her, her to be fertile. And the two will come together and it'll be a blessing for children in Jesus' name. Thank okay. you, Lord. There's a lady who wants her husband to know Jesus Christ and to change his life and for her and prayer for her children. Livia, Ramon, Carolyn, Tanya, and Antonio. Amen. For salvation? For salvation. Well, that's a... That's, yes. a, um, that's one of my favorite prayers, brothers and sisters. We just proclaim the word of Acts 16.31. As you have believed over your household, so your entire household is now saved in the name of Jesus Christ. And in Cairo's time, Father, we ask you to release the Holy Spirit, whatever is necessary, to bring them into salvation and to keep them in salvation. Because we come in agreement, Psalm 91, protection over their salvation, that no weapon form will come against it. And they will be finishers of the faith. And you will be all together in heaven. Be blessed for that in Jesus' name. It's a young woman who wants a godly man in her life. <laughs> Father, I just thank you. I love praying for the Lord to give women wives, Amen. husbands. Father, I thank you that you're going to answer her prayer. And that a godly man that is your perfect will will find her. That's right. Speedily and quickly in the name of Jesus, Lord, and that she will send us her wedding pictures, Father, for your glory and honor. In and Father, Jesus so name. she doesn't waste her time. Shut the doors to everyone yes. that is not your will for her to marry. And open the door only to the one that is and let her know in her spirit. Let it sing inside of her and witness to her through signs that this is the one, Father. And close the door to everyone else. Just slam it shut so she doesn't waste her time and keep her pure through this, Father. Keep her pure, keep her heart pure through this, Father, and her body pure, a virgin undefiled in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm a man from Kuwait. Hello, Kuwait, you're blessed. He wants prayer to be closer to God. Oh, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that he will, the word says that he that seeks you finds you. Father, and I thank you that you're going to give him the desire to seek you and to know you in a deep, intimate Amen. way, Father. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I declare that you walk in the power of the resurrection and that you know Jesus intimately and you know him and you follow him and that you are baptized by the Holy Spirit in Amen. the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. And I thank you for Kuwait. I bless Kuwait we in agree, the Lord. Jesus name of Jesus. And I thank you, Amen. Father, that you would reveal yourself to that nation in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for Rosemary, Rosemary Saed. She wants blessings for her family in California. So can you bless them? Amen. I'm just going to say the ironic yes. blessing, which is the most precious bless blessing that we have. The Lord bless you and keep you, you, are, you and your entire family. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, shalom. And I thank you, Lord, that this family is a light. And I ask you to light this fire, the, the light on fire and let it glow so brightly with your love. And I just bless you with perseverance and love with what yes. you're going through right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray protection over you, Psalm 91, and over your household and over the threshold of your household, that no darkness may enter in the name of Jesus Christ. Be protected and be kept by the Lamb of God and by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
brothers and sisters, we love praying for you. Amen. When the Lord answers your prayers, call the Way TV and, and let us know. And give Jesus the glory. And give Jesus the glory. That's right. Because he's a performer. Amen. He is the performer. He's the one that does it for you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's so, right, Marisol, because the word says all the promises of the word of God are yes in Christ. And, and if you notice, we are proclaiming the word in each situation. The promises of the word of God, which God himself said, not one word will not perform that which he intended, it will not fall to the ground void. And so he will perform those words. And even as the angels are being sent to minister and to provide breakthroughs for you, and even healing angels are released, we just praise God because that is his kingdom, that is his love, that is gra his grace being poured out to you in accordance with his holy word. And we thank him for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So death doesn't have sting. I'm all about, I want to hear about Yeah, oh, death, death where's your sting, which is a scripture, mm -hmm. of course, in, in the word of God. Oh, death, where's your sting? And, you know, the Lord's been waking me up each night and then just teaching me different things and showing me what he wants us to, to talk about. So we don't talk about it just because we think it's something neat to talk about. We're talking about it because there are specific needs in the body. And perhaps there are fears in the body of Christ is what he showed me. See, we do not have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and self-control. So even death should not be fearful to us in the body of Christ. And we're going to see that in the word of God. But the Lord told me, proclaim the truth of the word. So we're going to have a lot of scriptures today. And then that word will settle into your heart and into your mind. And you'll even find there's times that you will be a blessing to others. Because we're even going to talk about evidence in the, in the word of God that children are saved. Babies or even babies that are aborted or, or any baby that has not come to fruition, why they're in heaven. And we even have evidence of that in the word of God. And we want that to be a blessing to you who have lost a child. And many have, miscarriage or otherwise. And it's a blessing to know that they are in heaven. And, and we're going to see even that in the word of God. And so, death. Oh, death, where is your sting? I, I can't wait to teach about this because this is all, the, all about Jesus. And we love talking about Jesus. This is all about what Jesus accomplished on the cross. So that in Revelation it says that Jesus himself holds the keys to death in Hades. He has total control, total power. He paid the price on the cross. And he went down into the earth, into Hades. And he took all the Old Testament saints back up with them to heaven. Because they saw him from a distance. But as soon as Jesus died, they all now had access to go to heaven. And so their spirits are all now in heaven. It, the word of God says he took captivity captive. And, and by the way, he took the keys to death in Hades right away, took them right out of Satan's hands, and now they're in his hands. So he has total power and authority over everything. And we're going to see this in the word of God, that even the days that are ordained from you, for you are ordained by God, not by the devil. They're, they are ordained to the day by God. And how the death of his saints is pleasing to God. There are so many scriptures that hopefully will take that fear away because the word of God says there is no fear in the body of Christ for death anymore. That's why it says, oh, death, where is your sting? But there is great fear outside of the church. That's why you see such mourning and hopelessness. And I want you to understand that it's one thing to mourn because you miss something, and we are supposed to mourn for that. The word of God says that. It's another for hopelessness, that they are gone and they are gone forever because they did not believe in Jesus Christ. See, that hopelessness can destroy you. But when you have hope, which the Word of God says, and you know that they went to heaven, it is, <laughs> it is completely different because then the peace of God can heal you and, and give you compassion and understanding and heal you inside and give you the loving comfort of knowing you're going to be with them in eternity. Even if it's your spouse who was lost. Like my dad lost my mom after 50 years of marriage. And I am not saying this is easy for anyone because I was with them when he went through the hardest times of mourning. And it was extremely difficult for him. I'm not going to lie to you. But now he knows the peace of God. Thank God for that. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, did comfort him through that. And if you've lost a baby 
or a young child, even this teaching will bless you because we're going to see how they're in heaven. So let's get started because there's too many scriptures. If I keep talking, we're not going to get to them. Let's turn to Psalm 139, verse 16. I love this. This is a psalm of David. Listen to what he says when he's talking about God. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. He's talking about in, 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 the, ba- in the womb. <laughs> well, I'm going to go one verse earlier so you understand it. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret, he's being formed in the womb of the mother. And skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. You, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book... They all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. I I hope you understand, God actually has a book of his plans for your life, and every day is preordained and already written. Because he sees the end from the beginning, he knows all things. There's not one day that is not ordained from you. And knowing that, that God knows your, the last day that you will breathe on this earth and your spirit and your soul will go up to heaven because apart from the body is to be present with the Lord and you will be with them for all eternity is a day of rejoicing for those that depart, that's for sure. Because it does not matter what illness, what disease you died, it does not matter. Because when you die, your soul and your spirit go up to heaven and all those diseases are gone. There is no disease in heaven. And to be absent from the body is to be, <laughs> to be apart from the body is to be present with the Lord in accordance with the word of God. So it is great comfort that we know the moment we die, and, and we know this from so many brothers and sisters who had near-death experiences or actually died and came back to life, how they actually went to heaven and then came back and were able to witness the beauty of heaven, even if it was for a moment. I have talked to and witnessed too many to not know that is true. And that's the beauty of it. And we're going to see that more and more in the the scripture. So let's turn to Luke 2.26 as evidence of what I just said, that he has preordained every day of your life. Luke (laughs) 2.26. This is Simeon, who is about to see Mary and the child Jesus. And I love this story, because listen to what is said about him. It had been revealed to him, this is right at the birth of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Mashiach, the Messiah. It (laughs) had been revealed to him by who? By the Holy Spirit, that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Do you... Do you understand? He was not going to die, and he already knew that because the Lord already told him his plans for his life, that he would see the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who was just birthed, be able to hold this baby before he died. So if you don't think God has preordained all the days before you and what's going to happen, then how is this possible? That the Holy Spirit would reveal it to him. That he would see this baby before he would die. I just love that about the Lord. He is in control of all things. Now, let's shift for a second to Romans chapter 5. Romans 5.12. Romans talks a lot about us dying. Um, And it says, Romans 5.12, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, And death through sin, because there was no death for Adam and Eve. Remember, the tree of life was in the Garden of Eden, and they they were going to live forever. Death did not enter. Death was a penalty of their sin against God. And then it carried through to all the generations after Adam of all of us. So, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. All right, so first of all, death is on this earth because of our sin against God. Not because God was me, not because God was... It's because of our sin against the holy God. So Death entered. So what you're saying, if we don't have Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're spiritually dead. Absolutely. And in fact, you're not only spiritually dead, but 
in the same way your soul and your spirit are eternal, your body is not. From dust you have come and from dust mm -hmm. you return. We have three parts, our body, soul, and spirit. Our body will go back to dust, and we'll get a new resurrected body when Jesus returns. But however, our soul and our spirit are eternal. And as we know from Mary Kay Baxter and divine revelation of hell, your soul and your spirit go down into hell for all eternity. If you don't have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, and you will be under eternal torment. And the level of that torment, according to the word of God, is based on how sinful you were in your life. And then sub death is like separation from God due to your sin. Yeah. To your yeah. sinful nature. Yeah. That's why it says in Revelation, those of Christ will not experience the second death. Where death and Hades and all people after judgment are thrown into the lake of fire. Anyone who believes in Jesus will not die again. For, for the word of God says, for it's appointed for man to die once and then... You either go down to hell or you're going to go to heaven. So you got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. Yeah. You got to make a choice. And, the way, and, and to accept Jesus. And then when you accept Jesus, you are no longer spiritually dead. And then you have access to salvation and to all the promises in Christ. Yeah. And it's so important we understand, Mary. So our soul and our spirit are eternal, they don't die. See, we, we have a misunderstanding of death. We think we die and everything goes black and it's a, a void or whatever. No, the word of God is very clear. To be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. And Paul actually says this. So the moment you die, your soul and your spirit go up to heaven and they're eternal. And you're going to be with Jesus Christ. Because the Lord Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Think about that. If you were separated from him somewhere then you are not with him. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And he's talking to the believers, his disciples. And so immediately when we die, our soul and our spirit go to heaven. And I don't know about you, but that's one of the greatest messages of today. To be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. You'll never be separated from him. And you'll be in the eternal glory of heaven with him. And I don't know, I mean, that is beyond beautiful beyond awesome to know that so that Paul actually was flipping back and forth in the scriptures be between I don't know whether I want to die he said to would be better that I die to be present with the Lord right now than I continue living but I will continue living because God has a calling on me and I must fulfill that calling so it is for the benefit of you saints that I stay on this earth but he said it would be better for me to be present with the Lord and to go to him and die how do you like that how many of us, Marisol, have the heart to know that it would be better to be present with the Lord and to die than to be on this earth? Instead, we grasp and hold on to every precious moment and try everything to prolong our life, right? I mean, isn't that our human nature? Mm -hmm. But if you know you're going to glory and all pain, all tears, all suffering will be gone, and you know where you're going to your Father in heaven, which is where we will go, brothers and sisters. Perhaps death has no sting. And you know, Dexter, I've, I've been to heaven. The <clears throat> Lord, you know, took me to heaven. And it's a wonderful place. It is the most beautiful That's place right. I have ever seen. It is amazing. So you don't have to fear death. There's so many wonders and blessings and things there. And, and that, you know, he said that he, will, he was going to prepare a house for us. Wow. Yeah, he prepares our mansions or our house for us. And those are earned based on how we serve him on earth through faith abiding in him. For without faith it is impossible to please God. And if you are not attached to the vine and doing it, you do not have those rewards. It is so important that we understand it's through the intimate relationship and faith in him and that we gain those rewards. And by loving him, <clears throat> not because you want to be the person or famous or make money, just because you love him. And when you love him and you experience him in the power of the resurrection, he changes you, you and then out of love you want other people to have them 
so they can have the peace, his love, his, his nurturing, his faith, his hope. You just want to share something with, with yeah. the other people. When you have something really good, you want to share it. And it all comes from him. All the love, the faith, the hope comes from him because he says, abide in me. And he says, apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing, nothing for the kingdom. Nothing. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's why we need to abide in him and be, have an intimate relationship with him. So let's turn to Romans 6, 3, because we have quite a few more scriptures to go through. Well, we could continue this teaching next week. That's true. It says, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? This is important. We understand how we get eternal life here. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. So we all die with Christ just as he died on the cross. That just as, because then we need to be resurrected just as because he does. Because that's like a, it symbolizes like a spiritual cleansing. It dies to ourself or our desires, our will, and we give our life to Christ to deny ourselves and our desires and will, take up our cross and follow him. So it says, so we're buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we're raised from the dead. For if we be united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Hallelujah. We're raised from the dead. We, we never die. That's the beauty of it. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. That's why he will never leave us or forsake us. We will always be with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him or over us. Wow. So we're dead to sin. We're dead to sin. We Amen. died to our old self, and we're resurrected. See, that's the beauty of salvation. I don't think we quite get this sometimes. But Jesus told Nicodemus, the Pharisee, he said, you have to be born again of water and of spirit, or else you will not see the kingdom of God. And we need to understand, we died to ourselves, and we're born again as a new creation. All things are made new in Christ a new creation in Christ, and the Holy Spirit fills us and seals us for salvation. So this being born again is the resurrection already. We are eternal. We are, that's why the Word of God says, I hope you get this, we are already citizens of heaven, the Word of God says. He, he was talking to Christians on the earth. We are citizens of heaven, seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are already there. We are eternal already as we walk on this earth. The only thing left is for our bodies to die and go back to dust, our soul and our spirit to be joined with them forever. And when Jesus Christ comes again, we get our new resurrection bodies, everyone. First, the dead who died in Christ first, followed by those who are living at that time when Jesus Christ returns again. And the Word of God says the new bodies that we have will be imperishable just like Christ, eternal. And we will never die again. And that's why the Word of God says that all we are all new creatures in Christ yeah. Jesus. And that all things have passed away. You're no longer the same all person. All things are made new. All things are made new. If you used to steal, you don't steal anymore. If you used to kill people, you don't kill anymore. If you used to be an adulterer and cheat on your wife, you don't do that anymore. You are a new creature in Christ. And then, furthermore, it says there is no condemnation That's right. to those that are in Christ Jesus. That's right. Not only do you change, but he cleans that past and you are no longer in condemnation. Hallelujah. He gives you freedom from sin. That's right. And you get a new slate. That's right. All, that's slate. why he says, as far as the east is from the west, so far your sins removed from him. And what's amazing about the word of God, says that he, it says God doesn't even remember him anymore. Mm. Remember Mary Kate Baxter? She talked about the book when someone gets saved of how they use this precious, like golden blood and, and wipe out all your past sins. They are gone. They are not even remembered anymore by the Father. 
I found that just so amazing. But the devil, well, he's not stupid. He's a, he is the accuser of the brethren. He will come and lie to you and tell you you've blown it. You've sinned too greatly. You can't be washed clean by the blood. You blew it. God doesn't love you anymore. Well, he's a liar. I know that because he condemned me for, it was over a year, Marisol, I had to fight that condemnation as a prodigal son returning until I was finally freed of that by the grace of God. So let's, let's um, now I want to talk about, I want to extend this that you never die because the scriptures are about to say this in, in profound ways of how we never, death has no sting and, we, and our souls and our spirits don't die. Let's read what the word says. First of all, the scripture we all know says it in a very simple way, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's why it's grace, people. That whoever believes in him should not perish, or in Greek, should not die, but have everlasting life. So we are eternal the moment we believe. And I don't know about you, Marisol, but that is so awesomely comfortable, comforting to me to know that I am his son, his adopted son, and I am eternal. And now let's turn to 2 Timothy 1.10. I think some of these scriptures will surprise us what they say when we read them all together like this. 2 Timothy 1.10. Oh, I get it. You got it before me. Yeah. You want me to read it? <laughs> yes, ma'am. That would be awesome. But it is, has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death. Read that again. Who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Wow. Immortality means you will... He destroyed death and immortality means you will live forever and rule and reign with Christ and be with them forever. And, and let's just keep going, because there's more scriptures. You, I, I love the way the word of God confirms itself over and over again. So let's turn Marisol to John 11, 25 and 26. <laughs> You're going to be stunned by the words of Jesus. I, I love this. John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus says to Martha, when he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead, so remember, he has the keys of death and Hades, and, and whoever he chooses could have life any moment, even if they just died. He says, I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus said. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Wow. Do you believe this, that you shall never die? That what she just read about, you're, you're, you have immortality, you are going to live and reign with Christ forever. Because that's what happens when you're born again in Christ. You are now as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And you are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of salvation. So if you're a Christian, when you die, it's not tragic. It's just the gateway for you to spend the Lord the rest of your life with God. With no pain, with no suffering, with no trials, with no tribulation, with no diseases. With, with no body. No people attacking you, no people hurting you or those you love that you have to worry about forgiving. All, <laughs> all that goes away. John 8, 51. Let's just keep going and make sure this sinks into our, our souls and spirits. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Kind of letting it sink in, huh? Ooh. If anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Ooh. That's pretty powerful. <clears throat> 1 John 3, 14. I just want to make sure we get this sinking into our spirit. Because this is good news. And this is something the devil, if this is in your spirit and this is in your soul, that the, con, the accuser, the brethren, will never touch you again in Jesus' name. For I declare this truth, will, will, as the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, able to pierce the division between your soul and spirit, that this truth will settle in your heart and your soul and your spirit. And the accuser, the brethren, will not come against you ever again 
in Jesus' name. I'm going to read 1 John. So 1 John 3, 14, thank you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we loved our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Did you hear that? He's, he's giving you evidence of your salvation, that you've passed from death to life, and he's talking to people alive, not that have just died. You have passed from death to life. You are reborn in Christ, and you are now eternal in Christ. But again, the second time in the row, he says the first time, he says, if you obey my word, abide in my word and obey it. And now he's saying, if you love your brothers, which is again, obey my word. So the evidence that we have walked into eternal life is that we're obeying the word of God. And remember, Jesus said there's really two commandments, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. In other words, nothing comes before him. You've surrendered all your life to him, and you love your neighbor as yourself, which is what that's talking about. That is evidence that you have passed from death to eternal life, and death has no part in your life ever again. I mean, that... That's amazing, Marisol. The moment I believe and give my life to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, the moment Romans 10, 9, and 10 comes true, where I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, so it's my mind and my heart, then you shall be saved. John 3, 16, all this is now activated in your life. Now... You just pursue him with all your heart every moment of your life. Every moment of your life, you give yourself to him. And you watch what he does in your life. You watch how all this evidence that we're talking about comes deep within your spirit and your soul. So, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8, Marisol. Sometimes there, it's difficult for us to understand, though, what happens with the resurrection of the dead. Uh -huh. And how that comes into play. So I think it, it helps to just try to um, let the Holy Spirit teach us some more about that from the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8 okay. says, So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. See, Paul is speaking, and Paul says in another place the same thing. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm at a crossroads. I don't know which to choose, death or life, because if, I'm, if I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. So again, Paul says this more than once. It is so important we understand that you are alive in Christ. Your soul and your spirit are eternal. They will go to the Lord the moment your, your body dies. And they will never experience death. And so to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's how Paul and why Paul can say that. And that's why Philippians 1.21 says that to die is to gain. Yeah. Right? Turn to that, Marisol. Yeah. Turn to that. Philippians. How'd you know that was my next scripture? Oh, I don't know. Well, I guess the Spirit told me. Yeah. Well, turn to that. But, but read 121 through 123, if you can. Philippians. 121 through 123. And this is the part I'm talking about where Paul was trying to figure out whether he wanted to live or die. I want to make sure you see this in the scriptures. Philippians 1, 21 through 23. Okay, I'll read it now. Amen. Thank you, Father. We just praise you. It says, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Yeah. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yeah. Yet, what, sh yet, what should I choose? <laughs> I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Yeah. Wow. Again, don't let anyone mislead you or the devil lie to you. All this is showing you that you are eternal. And therefore, O oh death, where is your sting? Which is the word of God. And, and so I want to show you evidence of this in Acts 7.54. I love this. This is about Stephen when he gets stoned to death. 
But we're going to read carefully what he says right at the end. So Marisol, let's turn to Acts 7, 54 through 59. You want me to read it? Yeah, 54 okay. through 59. This is beautiful. Okay. Amen. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And Marisol, wow. I want you to stop. This is the first martyr from Christ other than John, which was before, before Christ died. But this is the first martyr that we're aware of after Christ died. Look how God is showing us what it will be like when we die. For you will see, Jesus. You, this, this is, he's showing you the glory of the death of his saints. This is not a small thing. Go ahead and keep reading because there's an amazing thing he says that proves that his spirit is eternal and immediately goes to the Lord. Keep reading. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive Eat my spirit. spirit. What is he saying? His wow. eternal spirit. What is he saying? Receive my spirit. And look what he says then afterwards. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Did you see the grace of God? I don't even think he felt the rocks. Do you understand? He was a martyr, and yet I don't even think he felt the rocks. The Lord, he fell asleep, and he was immediately with the Lord. The Lord, you know the Lord received his spirit, his eternal spirit. You know, because Marisol, 1 Corinthians six seventeen says, He was joined to the Lord as one spirit, one spirit. In other words, your spirit and, his, and the Holy Spirit join as one. That's why when you're filled with the Holy Spirit... The word teaches us that. The Holy Spirit comes in and joins as one with your spirit. And it's very clear we're made up of three things, spirit, soul, and body. And that's why he says, receive my spirit, which the Holy Spirit is already there with them. And he just, whoosh, up to heaven. And I, I love that. And, and even, it was immediate forgiveness. Yes, and immediately, and, just like Christ from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know what to do. Even to the last breath, he was obedient to God's word to to bless and love his enemies. Wow. What an example. What an example is right. And you don't hear him crying and moaning and screaming. The Lord gently puts him to sleep and takes him home. Which, by the way, I've I prayed for my own poppy, my own dad, and Marisol's dad, because they're in their late 80s or 90, um, that the Lord would just take them peacefully home, you know? And yeah, I, uh, because I know in the Word of God there's promises around that, and yes, I prayed those. But I'm just saying, I want my poppy to go peacefully home to the Father, just like Stephen. Maybe not stones being thrown at him, you know what I mean, because we don't have the same persecution yet here in America. And in foreign countries like Israel and Kuwait and others, you are undergoing this and persecution Egypt. in Egypt. You are under the threat of death and losing everything. Did you know, maybe you didn't know this, but the Jews, when they were, had the water baptism, it wasn't confessing Christ that got them in trouble. It was the act of water baptism, in other words, the death of themselves and the rebirth into Christ and the confession of that, the water baptism. It was a law at the time that if they went through that, they were not only kicked out of the synagogue, but they lost all their possessions. Their house, their home, everything. Everything. And yet we know many of them, despite that, came to Christ. 
So the <laughs> I'm going to read this, and this is going to surprise you. Psalm 116, 15. Those of you who have, have had family members martyred, I want you to understand how God looks at this. I think it will surprise you. And the Spirit's all over me right now, and I know this is going to bless some of you. Psalm 116, 15, Marisol. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to surprise you. But do you, do you have it? You want to read it? Okay. Precious is the sight, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Wow. Do you understand? For, for you or, or someone you love that's been martyred, to not have denied Christ, even when faced with death or loss of all your possessions, do you understand, just as Stephen was martyred, this brings glory to God and is pleasing to him. I don't think we can really understand that fully unless we have the kingdom mindset of, eternal, of eternity. Well, we will we be with him in eternity. And that the death on this earth is nothing but a, a, a tiny blip of transition. In fact, the word of God says in our entire lifetime, God only breathes once. And a day is to a thousand years, and a thousand years is to a day. I don't think we understand that if you are chosen to die for him as a martyr, that is pleasing to him. Maybe that will be some comfort to some of you to give honor and to thank God for the honor that that person will receive in heaven. Because even in Revelation, it talks about those who are under the throne of God who have been martyred during the Great Tribulation and how they will rule and reign with Christ during the millennium, the thousand years, with special honor. You know, I want to talk about this in practical terms. Mm -hmm. You know, those 21 um, Coptic Egyptians that were beheaded. That's right, Marisol. They didn't deny Christ. That's the point. That's why God gets such glory. How can Christ not be real if these people won't even deny him with faced with death? Do you understand? They were singing unto the Lord, and God received them and gave them honor and blessings. And, I mean, what a testimony of serving God in, 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 our, in, in present time. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm it, just... And I honor those have, that had... I mean, I families. just honor you and your families. If you have know of someone, even a friend or a family member that's been martyred, we just bless you. Holy God. We bless God. their mothers, We their bless children. your family. And Holy Spirit Comforter, I ask you to minister to this family, but I ask you to also give them the comfort of knowing that this death without denying Christ is so precious in the eyes of God and so pleasing to God Almighty what they did. And we honor those that have gone before us and have been martyred for, the, for our sake. Thank you, Jesus, for every one of them because they're precious to us too in the body of Christ. And Father, I just ask if, if a family member was lost who provided income or anything else for the family, that you will bless his family. Yes. You say, widows, orphans, it does not matter. That I will give them a new family, that you give them a new family and you provide for their needs in accordance with the word of yes. God. Even as you did to the widow who lost her husband. And Elijah came and miraculously filled those jars with oil over and over again so that she could pay for yes, her house. Yes, Lord. That you will provide for them miraculously and bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, <clears throat> we're almost at the end, Mary, so I want to read um, <clears throat> another scripture. You get so excited. I, I do, but the, the Lord told me to read the scripture, so this is the last one I'm going to read. And then we're going to pray, because this, this was a blessing to me. Um, because, you know, a lot of people, including myself and my family, you know, through miscarriage have lost a baby, and um, and a lot of others have lost a baby because when, before they knew Christ or because they were confused by the devil, they had an abortion. But remember, all these sins are forgivable. Thank God. Um, and, and in 2 Samuel 12, 22, this, 
Scripture really gave me comfort, and the Spirit spoke to me one day, because I have a baby through miscarriage, to name my baby, which I did because the baby's in heaven. So I want to give you comfort that before a child becomes at the age of accountability, and Mary Kay Baxter witnessed this in heaven, all the children, all the babies, all the aborted babies, and even the younger children who were not yet of the age of accountability. Here's what David says when his baby is dead because of a sin with Bathsheba. And he had fasted and prayed for this baby to be spared by the Lord for seven days. And here's what happened when the baby died. Listen to what he said to his servants. And, and, and David said, While the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? And listen to what he says. I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. See, David had a revelation. David had amazing revelations. Just read the Psalms. They're phenomenal. And the, the tabernacle, a 24-hour worship nonstop. He was in many ways living in the new covenant. But he had a revelation that I will go to my son when I get to heaven. I will go and my son will be there. Do you see? That's his word of hope. That's why he stopped weeping. I hope you're getting this. He wept for God's mercy to save the child, but when God's punishment came through because of his sin with Bathsheba, he stopped weeping because he knew one day he would be back with this baby in heaven. He would go to the baby in heaven. And Jesus said, when the disciples and all the little children were coming to him and said, do not stop the little children from coming to me because they were sitting in his lap. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is for such as these. And in fact, he said, their angels face the Father at all times, so any prayers that are needed are instantly heard by the Father at all times. So if you have a baby that you've lost, know that you'll be reunited with them in heaven and be comforted by this. And if you are like me, the Lord led me to actually name my baby. Thank God. And I'm so thankful for that comfort, the comfort from God over that. So Marisol, I want to, do you want to start praying or do you want me to pray? We have like five minutes, so I'll start praying. Okay. So remember, <clears throat> God bless you and sting has no death over you. Amen. That's right. Thank you for watching us as we pray. Go to our website, www.shalomshalom.org. Oh, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that a hope is in you that we can walk in perfect peace knowing that death has no sting on us who can do anything to us lord because being absent from the body is being immediately with you in heaven father i just thank you for that that we don't have to walk in fear. Amen. That we walk in you. Amen. In boldness, knowing that you love us so much that you gave your only begotten son. Father, I thank you for the people that are watching. And they love you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you are with them. And that they understand this amazing truth. If you are with us, who could come against us? And then nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. I just thank you for that, Lord. And I just praise you and I just worship you. And I just give you, Father, I am so thankful for the things that you do for us, Lord. Amen. And Father, I just bind the spirit of fear and condemnation. Mm -hmm. For there is now, therefore, no condemnation for those yes. who are in Christ Jesus. And we have a spirit of love and power yes. and self-control. Therefore, spirit of fear and spirit of condemnation, yes. you lie and deceive in spirits. We bind you in your lies and deceits mm -hmm. over my brothers and sisters in Christ. And we plead the blood of the Lamb over your conscience, over your thoughts, over your memories, that they are realigned as the mind of Christ. And all that guilt and shame and that pain from the past is in accordance with Hebrews 9, 14, and 10, 22, is cleansed and washed clean. You will no longer have the condemnation of the lying, deceiving devil again. And Father, I thank you for blessing my brothers and sisters who yes. have lost a loved one, a child, that their child is in heaven. 
Holy Spirit, right now I ask you to comfort them. I ask you to bless them with that knowledge and the knowing that comes from you, Holy Spirit, that their blessed child is in heaven and they will be reunited with them, Father. And Father, I bless my brothers and sisters yes. to continue to walk in your perfect will, not in your permissive will, not to veer to the left or the right, but in your perfect will, so that they will finish the race in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. and they will all see each other in heaven. And I praise you and thank you that Jesus, you paid the price with the blood of the Lamb, sacrificed on the cross for our sins. And Father, we just give our lives to you afresh and new, and we confess with our mouth that <laughs> we confess with our mouth that Jesus, you are our Lord, and we believe in our heart that God raised you from the dead. And we thank you now that we are saved, yes. and uh, we ask you to fill us with the Holy Spirit and with the assurance that your Word says of our salvation and our eternal life with you. From this day henceforth, we plead the blood of the Lamb over it and yes. pray Psalm 91 protection, and no weapon form will prosper against this knowledge and this knowing that we are your sons and daughters, Father. And we praise you and thank you for it, and we give you our lives afresh and new this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching your program on your wonderful, amazing TV station, The Way TV. This has been your program, Shalom, Shalom, with Reverend Dexter Pelser and Dr. Marisol Pelser. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Amen. Bye. Blessings. Good night.